Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a fun little video about adult coloring supply accessories that I can't live without. And uh, these are all supplies that I use quite frequently. I'll leave links in the description below. Some of these I use for backgrounds, some I use for accents and whatnot. So let's just get started. Okay, first things first. These are two items that I consider accessories, though they could be used on their own and don't have to be. But these are what I use the most for backgrounds in my adult coloring pages. So the first thing is gel crayons. Now I just pulled out my King Art ones. However, I also own the Faber-Castell Gelatos. I own the TBC Silky Gel Crayons. I have some from Crayola. I actually have quite a few different brands. Speaking of which, I will be doing a Versus um, video on gel crayons, just like I did with the water-soluble crayons, which brings me to water-soluble crayons. Now, the most common one I use for backgrounds is the Coran Dash Neo Color 2. These are very fun. To work with especially for backgrounds and one of my go-to's when I don't want to use gel um, gel crayons now I do have a video comparing multiple brands of gel crayons from the Lyra which I still have um, Mungyo a few others so that you can take a look and see there's tons of different options so go watch that video uh, you'd actually be surprised at some of the top ones, top performing ones, um, but Neo Color I do still go to, it's my go-to. It has an amazing array of colors here, and really, it's just, they're fun. The Lyra are great too though, so check out that video. Okay, I love to use watercolor pencils and Derwent ink tents, so I typically activate my Derwent ink tents um, one of two ways. First and favorite is using a colorless alcohol marker blender. This is the Ohuhu one. I bought them in a six pack. I also have an Art and Fly just hanging out here. Honestly, whatever's cheapest per marker at the time is what I buy. I have quite a few videos on using these. And then my second favorite to use to activate ink tents or watercolor pencils are these little water brushes here. Um, I love the Derwent one. I've been meaning to buy the whole set. This is the only one I have from Derwent. And then I have the Pentel ones. Now Pentel ones are by far my favorite. I used to like the Kiritake Zig. However, over the years I've really come to love the Pentel. Uh, they used to come in three packs. Now they have a four pack. I need to buy it. <laughs> Mine are getting a little worn and frayed. But highly recommend those if you have stuff that needs to be activated. Now, I do like to use watercolors in my backgrounds on occasion. So another favorite of mine, and a, you know, I do watercolor painting. I have a watercolor channel for those of you who don't know that already. So one of my other favorites when I do watercolor or anything where a brush needs to be cleaned off is this paint puck cup. I own two of them. One is strictly for clean water, one is for dirty water, um, although they both look quite dirty. Uh, I need to put them in the dishwasher. They come apart, and you can put them in the dishwasher, and they clean up really nicely. And these are way overdue. <laughs> but it has those little nubs on the bottom, so it pulls the paint right off. And I swear, this water could be filled to the top with murkiness, but it cleans your brush. It's, like, amazing. And then it has these little notches so they can drip dry. It's like the most versatile, whoever made this is a freaking genius. <laughs> I swear by that cup. Okay, another popular thing I tend to use for backgrounds, more so to add the sparkly bits, are the Nouveau Glimmer Paste. I really like this. It's lasted a long time. You can do a brush or a palette, and it doesn't dry up like my... Um, which we call it folk art paints have done. So it's it's long lasting shelf life shelf life wise. Ooh, rough one. Also the Mod Podge glitter, one of my favorite because there's two reasons behind it. One, amazing shelf life. I've had these for a few years. This is just two of the examples I have. There's uh two more glitter ones I have and a few more I'm looking at buying because I'm getting rid of my folk art ones that keep drying up on me. Now these 
never try up. I mean, like, like I said, they're huge for one. It's like 13 bucks and you get this monster eight, eight ounces. But these things last forever. Like, it's still nice and liquidy. Oh, got some dry crusties. The colors are fun. And the other reason I like it is if you put it over your page, not only will you get the glitter effect, but it seals your page. So you don't have to seal your paper and worry about it smudging onto the page next to it. So it's like a dual purpose. And they don't stay sticky or anything gross like that. All right, paint pens, not Posca ones though. I like to use Pandafly and then there's one more brand of these white acrylic paint markers, which I'll either use to add highlights or cover up lines. And I like to get them in an extra fine point. I'd rather have a fine point and then go over it a few times than a chunky monkey. Um, but I definitely recommend these. I used to be all about the white gel pens, but after a while they'd clog or stop working. So these are my go-to now. Um, basically anything I would have used a white gel pen for, it's now these bad boys. Then we have two more glittery accent options. The Spectrum Noir Crystal Clear Pack. I think it comes in a pack of three or two. Either way, these are amazing. They add so much sparkle to your page. Really fun. The little squeeze button system. And then I have some Wink of Stella. I've been playing around with these Wink of Stella ones and trying to get the hang of it. They're a little more expensive and harder to get a hold of, for me at least, than the Spectrum Noir ones. And then the pack I got was like a three pack. It had a gold glitter, silver glitter, and something else. Whereas this was just all nice and clear. I do like the performance of these, however, they come out a little liquidy, whereas the Wink of Stella clear one is a bit more sparkle, but I feel like I get more in the barrel with this one here, and even if I have to go over it twice, it's sparkly enough. Just my opinion on that. And then we have the brushes. Now these are makeup brushes, though I don't use them for that. Um, you may also find them as craft brushes because people often use them for distress inks and inking and stamping. I use them for my gel crayons, which I'll put on a palette like this. It got warped in the dishwasher. <laughs> Crayon dash needs to go on the top rack. I know that. My kids did not. <sighs> That's like a $12 palette. I do love this palette, but I'm not actually including it in this because it's overpriced. Um, you can go to the Dollar Tree, just get one with a rough edge and Dollar Tree for reals. It's like, sorry, the Dollar Twenty Five tree now. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a link to my favorite brushes. I have a ton of these because I like to just put them off to the side and clean them all later um, and not necessarily right away. I highly recommend multiple sizes. I have a bunch of fat ones. I have some really, really skinny ones. Great tools. Okay, a must is a brush. This is actually a makeup brush, but it was just so pretty to look at. I got it in a two pack. I have one upstairs here in my art studio and one downstairs where I actually color, and I love it. And the reason you want a brush is if you have any pencil dust, you brush it away. Then it won't leave streaks and get all over your page. And I'm the worst at it. I still use my fingers, but I preach to use this. But I have two of these, and I've had these same two for years. And I haven't had to replace them. They're fluffy. They're perfect. I can clean them if they start to get too much in them. And yeah, highly recommend having a brush of some kind. I'm tempted to buy this one that looks like a mermaid's tail, just for the look. <laughs> So really the kind you buy does not matter. Okay, a decent sharpener. I have gone through my share of sharpeners and unfortunately, and I say this unfortunately because the price has gone up on this since everyone else jumped on the doll train, is I keep going back to the doll 133. Now this is my second doll 133. My first one ended up breaking. But I really love the way these perform. It doesn't chew up a ton of wood or lead. It gets you a sharp point. It lets you work with your pencils until they're pretty close to the end. Now I do have the electric AFMAT. I have a whole video actually on the AFMAT sharpener. I highly recommend that if you want an electric one. It does a great job. But the one I tend to use the most is my Doll 133. And this fits, by the way, 
some heavy chunky pencils because you can just squeeze them in there including my square brute fooners and uh, felissimos so it can handle big pencils last but not least is my <laughs> disc bound swatch chart system I say mine because this is how I swatch but I did not in fact build this invent this or anything like that I'll leave a link to the kit I used now I have these little swatch books all color coordinated it's like I have a purple I have a blue I have a green but they're all different categories so this one in particular is all watercolor pencils I have a lot of watercolor pencils but for those of you new to my channel it's because I'm doing a battle <laughs> between all these brands I wouldn't actually own that many sets I need to get rid of these after I finish. Look at that, it's just insanity is what it is. I have one for my regular pencils, <clears throat> which is downstairs. Markers have their own. Um, gel crayons and accessories like Neo Colors and stuff also have their own. But the disc binding system is great. I used my Happy Planner disc puncher, so that's why I only have this many rather than those two. And then it's perfect because I can pull these sheets out. Like, so if I need to pull this out, I just pull it off the disc binding. And I don't have to mess with plastic covers or anything like that, and I can flip through. So I definitely recommend having some sort of system for all your swatch sheets. I used to have them in just one monster binder. It was like a three inch binder. And it was great at the time, but it was just tons of plastic sheets tabs for watercolor and that and then I was like you know what I'm going to put these and make them disc bound because I love the fact that unlike my monster binder I can just open it like this you know so say I'm using these brunzeals just open it and flat and just takes up less space on my desk so something I recommend doing or just finding your own system rather than having loose charts but then when they're all together you don't have to be like where did that swatch chart go now I am horrible sometimes with new sets. I'll swatch them and forget to punch them and put them in. <laughs> but that's just me. But I do recommend not doing that. So those are just some of my favorite adult coloring accessories. Keep in mind these are just accessories. Oh gosh, I forgot the most important. Sealant. How could I forget this? So I like to seal all of my pages. I have Krylon Workable Fixative downstairs too far to go get and then I have this gloss finish from Aileen's that I use at the end workable fixative I typically use if I have a pastel background or I'm using pen pastel skin tone stuff and I want to put pencil over it so I'm not quite ready to seal the page this I use when I'm ready to seal the page especially something like Prisma which will rub against the page next to it when the book is closed I let it dry 24 to 48 hours. It's not sticky. I can close the pages and they never stick again. And the one reason I, I tend to go for this one or Grumbacher, they make a really good one as well, so I'll link both, is they dry fast, they're non-yellowing, but they actually seal and they don't leave a sticky. Um, the Krylon finishing one gets sticky and tacky and no matter what I have I left one out to dry for over a week and it stayed tacky whereas Grumbacher and this one do the job so if you need to seal your pages or you're worried about smudgies or you have pastels that need to be sealed and kept in place I recommend definitely getting something like that but yeah those are accessories that are my favorite constantly used all the time and I can say without a doubt I don't regret buying them because they actually get love whereas I did that video not too long ago about <laughs> things I regret buying because I do have those things that sit there and just never see the light of day so let me know some of your favorite accessories what you tend to reach for and use I'm always interested and until next time take care bye now